Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Code GPT. In the last video about Continue, somebody left a message uh, wanting a comparison between the two. So I figured I'd start just by giving it a quick look over. So I'm not entirely sure if this is the one that they meant because there are so many Code GPTs in the marketplace. But as you can see, this is the one that I am testing out today from CodeGPT.co. And it seems to be the one with the most downloads and best reviews. So we're going to go ahead and try this out. So looking at the docs can be a little bit confusing because there is a pricing icon up here and if we take a look then you can see that it is a paid service but the vs code extension is actually free so for the sake of the demo and for the sake of running things locally that's all we really care about so back in vs code we will go ahead and make sure that we have that installed and then we'll get a nice little panel in our dashboard over here on the left and immediately what i notice is that the selection of models available for olama are pretty limited and there's no immediate option for how to add your own if we go to the settings for the extension by clicking that gear icon up at the top you can see that there's not really a lot here either and you can only select two different models to use for auto completion this isn't going to matter too much for me because again this is one of those things that didn't work for me but if you know how to get it running leave a comment in the description i'll revisit it I actually went back and made sure that I had this very specific Olama model downloaded, so Deep Sea Coder colon base. Uh, so I was able to pull that and then I adjusted the delay between when you stop pressing the key to when it starts doing the completion to 40 milliseconds and then the max tokens to 500 uh, just to get a pretty decent amount but without generating an essay. And it did actually work for me. So from Flask import, and you can see it's pretty snappy. So Flask render template request app equals so it does work but the problem is that since you're using deep sea coder base that's the tiniest model that's the 1.8 billion model then you're very limited to the quality of the code completions i think it's good because it's snappy so at least you get something so if i was going to define you know uh, if so it looks like it's struggling there if name you can see on the bottom right that it is running so there's a little copilot is running thing if you hover over it i'm gonna try to and I'm not entirely sure if that's just because this is set a little too high. So maybe if we set it to a second, uh, it might just be generating a bunch of completions back to back and then not knowing where to put them. I'm going to go ahead and quit VS Code and open it again. And we'll see that it's working again now. And this is after changing the um, amount of time that it takes to... Oh, it didn't save it. Okay, never mind. I, I do think that this probably should be a little bit higher. So I'll set it to two seconds. So, I mean, that seems to be working pretty good. I mean, these completions aren't really what I would want to use, but the fact that it actually does work is actually pretty nice. And it is pretty snappy when it's not getting clogged up. Though, again, you could see that here it generated basically nonsense. I think this could be fixed if we're able to use something like the bigger version of GPT, the bigger version of Deep Sea Coder, or if we're able to choose our own model, which I think you should be able to do if you modify the JSON settings directly, but that is a topic for another video. So setup for this is pretty much just that easy. It's a lot simpler than continue since you don't have to add your models manually, but you do have to know that the models here listed are the only ones you're going to be able to use. If we click this little icon up at the top, we also get some nice documentation right inside of VS Code as far as what the providers are and installation and how to use it. We're going to close that because it's simple enough. We can just type in hi. Okay, actually, I just noticed something. If you click on the model field, 
you can actually paste in a model. So I just did that and typed in hi and then who are you? And we can see that we got Hermes 2 because this is the new Hermes 2 model. So even though you can't set them up to be in the list specifically, so if I close that out, it's gone. At the very least, you can paste in your model and use it that way. It seems like this chat window is also set up to use uh, multimodal models, but as you can see, it's limited to their plus subscription, I guess. So we won't be able to test it out for the demo. I'm going to open up the same outline from the last video, except this time I'm going to rename it to .py so we get the linting working. And as far as the actual chat window, that's more or less what there is to it. Very similar to continue, not really too much different, and it's your average chat bot kind of experience. What is different is that if we select code over on the right in the file, we now get some context items in the menu. So when we right click, now we can choose to explain code and it will all happen on the left. So if you're somebody who doesn't want the AI actually interacting with your code directly, then this works well because most of the interactions for code GPT happen in this chat box. And then you have the option of pulling them into the code. So if I stop this, so I'll select the same model and I will click on the document code GPT and we'll notice that the same thing happens where it starts to document the code, but it all happens in the chat window. Okay, so it's finished and we can go ahead and click on insert code and we'll see that it adds it to the correct places. Now, I don't like the placement at the end, but it is identical to what it put out on the left. So that's fine. And I, this actually does do a much better job than continue at adding the code changes from the left into the actual code. And we can also try to modify the code right in the chat box and we could say, move the comments above. And we can see that it understood the task and it is moving them above. And once it's done, and now that it's done, we can go ahead and click on insert code. Oh crap, that actually didn't do. So I noticed that I had to undo the changes from before and then select the model again in order to insert the code in the correct place, which is a bit of an odd quirk, but at the very least, at least adds it in the correct places. Now it has a bunch of other features. For example, we can go in and we can refactor code or even explain that code. And after clicking on explain code, we can see that it actually goes through and analyzes it and gives us a breakdown of what's actually happening. I do notice that it takes a little bit longer to actually generate completions um, initially, and I'm not entirely sure if that's because this has a much longer context uh, history that's being passed into the model or if it's just a quirk of code GPT. Another thing to note is that I didn't really see any place for you to add a configuration for which Olama you're actually using. So I didn't see a place that you could put in the specific port or IP address so that you could use it with something external like in the previous video. So after clicking on unit test, we can see that it goes to work and it starts adding a unit test for that specific model. Uh, for the model's creation, in this case with Django. So now that it finished, we can actually take a look and then we can decide whether or not that's valid. And at this point, what I might do is just click an empty space in the file and then click on insert code and we could see it just copies it right over. So if we were going to have a specific dedicated unit test file for this and it was not going to be right inside of the models file, then we can essentially just do that, create a new file and copy this over. Now I don't like that there doesn't seem to be a good way to copy this over into context. It is interesting that we do have some very useful context menu items, but I do like and continue that we can just add something into context directly without having to copy and paste it over manually or edit it right inside of the file directly. But I think they're both valid options. So which do you prefer, continue or code GPT? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this and I will catch you guys in the next video.